Hey guys, Jeremy here from School of Walk Covent Garden. This is our new series of Saturday specials and because you guys asked, I'm going to show you some basic knife skills. Now Chinese food and Asian food, I always say is 90% preparation, 10% cooking. And 90% of the 90% of preparation is all about how good you are with your knife. During this series, I'm going to show you how to use your knife correctly and most importantly, safely. And then how to chop your vegetables the right way, fillet your fish the right way, and slice meat really nice and thinly. In this episode, I'm going to show you how to maintain your knife and also sort of keep your fingers safe. Because that's what's most important when you're using your knife. Now, I've got two different sharpening tools here. So I've got a whetstone, which to be fair, we don't use that often because in the school we have someone come round and sharpen our sort of 70 to 100 knives. Um, but I'm going to show you how you would use a whetstone first. Now, it's been sitting in water just soaking to absorb as much as possible and just let the, gli the knife glide across the stone. And the lower the number, the more coarse the actual stone. So you go coarse first and then finer later. Now I'll talk more about this as we go but my thumb is just over the top of my blade and my index finger wrapped around the knife just so I've got enough control. And then you want to hold the knife about sort of 30 degree angle just propped up like so and then just carefully push forward at a slight round at the top of the stone. Once you've done sort of five or ten pushes up one way, then you want to do the same on the other side. It's slightly more awkward, but you'll get it. Just take your time, don't rush that. Just give that a slight clean and turn your wet stone over the thousand, so that's the higher number, and that will be the finer glide. So that will be super sharp right now. Just go careful when you're drying that. Another thing to note is that my board has actually been stuck down here with a little bit of just wet kitchen paper just so that it makes sure that it doesn't move all over the place and that's really useful even just with general chopping. Now this steel, this is really more for maintaining your knife but on an everyday basis if you've only got a steel it will work just fine as well so long as you use it on a regular basis, once a week, something like that. Now there's different ways of doing it. You might see chefs and including myself sort of doing it like this that's probably the more dangerous way to do it. And hey, our chefs, we just like to showboat. So the simplest and safest way to do this is actually just to pop your steel down, or if you have something like this, you can lock it into the board. And then you just start from the base of your blade and you just bring that towards you. Similarly to the whetstone, at a slight sort of 20 to 30 degree angle, Simple as that. Now something that people don't know or generally is that there's lots of different types of cleaver. A western chef knife and a cleaver do similar sort of things but there are major differences and where sort of western knives or Japanese knives you can see that there's lots of different types of knife. You wouldn't imagine that the cleaver had the same sort of variation of knife but actually you could get hundreds of different type of cleaver each one there for a different reason. You guys will see me using this general slicing cleaver 90% of the time. That's because it's made to slice into things this way or that way, whichever way you want. And I'm going to show you that during the course of this series. The rest of the cleavers, this is more like a duck slicer. So you can get a cleaver specifically to slice duck. But again, it's really good for slicing small things. Or if you just don't want such a heavy knife, it works better. Although with general slices like this, it should have a nice 
balance to it. It shouldn't feel too heavy, not like a bone chopper. You get those massive sort of butcher's bone choppers. Some of them can be like really big, um, but hey, that's just way too big for me. So, um, and then a general sort of 20 centimeter or 30 centimeter chef knife, which is more of a Western knife, is definitely sort of less deep in terms of the blade. The biggest difference, which is why I like a Chinese cleaver, is its surface area, right? The nice surface area allows you to pick a lot of things up and bash things really easily. For this series, I'm gonna just use the School of Walk Slice and Dice Cleaver and show you how easy it is, once you've got the technique right, to use one knife for most of your cooking. So I'm gonna show you guys some simple knife skills, and most importantly, it's how to keep your fingers safe. We always say that in the school when we're doing classes, is that so the first 15, 20 minutes of any cookery class has to start with knife skills just to make sure everyone feels safe. Now, things like carrots or anything, like, there's a lot of things that kind of round and roll all over the place. Um, so we can stabilize that in a second. But most importantly, you have two hands for good reason, right? My, I'm right-handed, so my left hand is what I call the crab. It's a hermit crab, and it's a five-legged crab because I chopped the other three legs off. Now, the first important thing is that it's a crab because my three fingers in the middle are my front legs, and my little finger and my thumb are my back legs. And my back legs never go in front of my front legs because they're back legs. And if you do, you chop them off. And that is absolutely my scaremongering to tell you to listen to what I'm saying. The next thing is, they're always sitting behind and they're kind of like your stabilizers. My front legs, it's also a crab because my legs are always bent. They're never straight, they're always bent. Most chefs push their top knuckle forwards a little so that that can guide the knife. So you can see my crab is sitting in position. Next up, your knife hand. Now when you pick up the knife, a lot of people pick the knife up just on the handle. I find that a little bit awkward and not very comfortable. You'll get more control if you sit your index finger just over the top part of the blade and your thumb on opposite sides to get that sort of control. The next thing is, when you're slicing anything, and slicing is always more efficient than chopping. So the down and forwards is what I'm gonna teach you guys to do. So push down and forwards, down and forwards, down and forwards. Most important thing is, I'm saying down and forwards rather than down and backwards because if you come backwards, you're kind of restricting your elbow and your arm space. The more space you have, the more relaxed you'll be. When you're going down and forwards, make sure you always close the gap between the knife and the board. So a lot of people go down to the board but leave a gap and then come back again. That will not cut anything. So you've got to hit the board and push forward. Hit the board, push forward. Hit the board, push forward. There's a few reasons why that helps. First of all, science says that if you close the gap and push forward, you will slice through whatever you're trying to slice through. Secondly, if you have a gap, you can get your fingers underneath, which is not a good idea. So close that gap and then you won't cut yourself. Now I'm just using a bit of carrot to show you guys. Now, when you're slicing anything, you always wanna be about half an inch or a, a couple of centimeters ahead of what you're cutting, i.e. here, not here. Because if I go here, you'll just dig into whatever you're cutting and you won't get anywhere. So just ahead, I'm gonna slice, slice this carrot in half, down and forwards, sliced in half. Next up, I'm gonna take the carrot and I can see I'm just sitting my crab in the right position so that I can hold on to it. My back fingers, so my little finger and thumb, are just sitting behind and sort of stabilizing the carrot. I'm gonna start just ahead of my carrot 
and go down into it and slice down and forwards. Now I've got two stable halves of my length of carrot, I can slice into it. Once you get close enough to the board with what you're slicing, you can start to do that sort of rocking movement that you see the chefs do. Now that is down and forwards, and when you come backwards, leave the tip of your knife on the board, and all you do is relax and lift up your wrist. Down and forwards, lift up your wrist, down and forwards, lift up your wrist, down and forwards, lift up your wrist. The next thing you want to note is when you're cleaning your knife or anything off your knife, always use one finger and push away from the blade. If you're cleaning your hands, use the back of your knife, not the front. So the carrot's actually slightly high off the board, so I'm lifting my knife up every time I slice, but that down and forwards movement is really important. A lot of people struggle when they get to the end, and you can see that my sort of fingertips or my fingernails are just holding on to that last bit. If you struggle with that at the beginning, just stop there, don't push yourselves too far. But if you can do it, just take your time, don't rush, push down and forwards, and I think I can get one more slice out of that. There you go. One finger away from the blade. The last tip I'm gonna give you is how to pick things up. And as I said at the beginning of the video, the surface area of the cleaver is what helps to pick things up. So you, what you don't want is to cut yourself whilst you're picking things up. The easiest way to do that is to press down with your thumb so it's nice and tight to the surface of the board. And then when you pick things up, you can just gather on top and then take that off and lay that onto your plate. I'm gonna set up a simple wok clock just for a quick stir fry vegetable dish. So I've got my veg cut, I'm just keeping this really simple. I've got some straw mushroom here, which I'm gonna to add to it as well. My wok clock's ready, I'm just gonna use some simple veg veggie stir fry sauce and a few other sauces to wok this up. Everything in Chinese cooking it's finely sliced, finely diced, for good reason, so you can cook really quickly. So high heat. First up, your carrots. I don't want to overcook my veg, and there's enough oil in there for pretty much the whole stir fry, so I'm gonna go in with my asparagus. Keep that crunch, and as it's been so finely sliced up, it should only take a couple of minutes to finish the whole stir fry. Peppers, and then before I put my mushrooms in, I'm going to move everything to the side just so that those mushrooms can sear nicely in the wok. Push that to the back, allow space for my mushrooms. I might put a little drizzle of oil in just to sear the mushrooms nicely. Smoking hot. Mushrooms in. Press down on mushrooms so they get a good seal and the moisture of the mushroom stays inside them rather than sort of sipping out into the wok. And then turn those, you've got a nice char. And then bring the rest of the veg over the top. Flick those through. Now the flavor's gonna come in. Veggie stir fry sauce. Little dash of soy, that's just light soy, and a dash of rice wine. Keep that on the heat to bubble away, just stir that through nicely. Sesame oil is always at the end, just a drizzle of sesame oil. Hear that sizzle, never lose your sizzle guys. And that stir fry is done. Really simple, all about the knife skills and the preparation. So guys, now you know how to keep your knife sharp and make your cooking that much quicker and easier. Time to dig in. <laughs> like, the only way is to keep eating it. <laughs> 
really tasty. Guys, there's more episodes to come on knife skills, and don't forget to subscribe and like.